people feel that um, fornication is a safe way to guard their relationship. Probably I've been in this relationship with this guy and I've been, I don't know, it feels like the guy doesn't love me anymore. You are welcome to the maiden edition of the Y80 show. We are going to be looking at a very interesting and important topic today. This is a topic that is not frequently talked about and we see the need to discuss about it. Um, but before we begin, my name is Omodula Esther and I'm your host for today. With me is Omodula Success. And we also have a very special guest with us today. Mrs. Oye Oko. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, our topic today is fornication. And John, can you tell us what you know about fornication? Okay, thank you very much. <coughs> um, fornication, okay, let me start from the definition from the dictionary. Fornication, also known as premarital sex, is a sexual intercourse between two people who are not legally married. Um, it's also the variation from tradition, religion, and moral norms from abstinence of what my sex before marriage. Okay, before I go into what the Bible says, if you look at the statistical data of those who come from the kingdom, you see you'll be well, very overwhelmed because it's, it's really um, amazing. But let's not go into that. Let's even go into what the Bible tells us about fornication. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, let's see from that okay. chapter. The Bible really explains the meaning of fornication. And even in another measure, let's get to see what the Bible has to tell us. It says, Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, it says, But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, had committed adultery with her already in his heart. So the Bible even make us understand that it's not even um, fornication does not even start. It does not even occur when, like, they have sexual intercourse. It starts from the heart. When a guy or when a young man lost after after a young lady, or when a young lady lost after a young man, fornication has what already occurred in the heart. So that's what fornication is according to the Bible. Thank you very much. That was very very insightful. Um, we also want to, Dr. Um, I'm going to direct this question to Success. Um, why do you think people commit fornication? Hmm. There are plenty reasons why I think people commit fornication. For instance, now first of all, we have um, parents. Parents bringing parents now into the picture. Parents, they um, probably those ones that are divorced and have they made their life anyhow, they do their life anyhow, probably they bring men into the house and all those kind of immoral acts. Them doing those kind of things in front of their children can trigger their children into feeling that they can also do such things. Mm -hmm. For instance, now, their, parent, their children can feel that, okay, my mom is bringing men into the house, why can't I? Not even, not. might not also be, might not only be the parents, even um, siblings, elder siblings, um, aunties, uncles, when they go out, because I've heard of a story of a girl saying that when I went to my auntie's house, she bring in guys and those kind of things, so I don't really... <laughs> I Me mean, bringing in a guy to to sleep with is not a problem and those kind of things. So those kind of things trigger children because what children see, what teenagers see, is what they pick up, especially from loved ones, family, and those kind of things. Another thing is um, probably trauma. Someone may feel that because of um, they've slept, someone has traumatized them probably past through experience. way, past experiences. So they feel, they, they feel injured and those kind of things. So when they want to, so they want it to happen to other people. That's why you hear people saying that, have you had a boyfriend? Or that's why you hear people say that, why is it that up to, um, up to this age, you've not slept with a guy? So that's why you hear people say, if you check deep into them, you see that 
these things have happened to them before. So they probably they, it has happened to them before and they feel that there is nothing wrong with itself. So they want to invite people to it and that's also peer pressure. Another thing is people feel that um, fornication is a safe way to guard their mm. relationship. Probably I've uh, been in this relationship with this guy and I've been... I don't know, it feels like the guy doesn't love me anymore or he's not picking my calls as often as he used to. So what can I do to hold him down? What can I do to make him know that I'm still here for him and not this kind of talk that they talk to keep the relationship. To keep the relationship. So they feel sex is the best option and it's not. So there are several other reasons, and even down to primary school, secondary school nowadays, you see little children involving themselves in this immoral act, in this, and they feel it's normal. Where are these kids learning it from? So again, what you watch, parents, what you allow your children to watch, the um, children, because nowadays cartoons now are made in form of all these things. Yeah. I was so. Uh, uh, all right so cartoons now are made in form of all these things that parents might feel it's just cartoon parents might feel it's just something my my child watch to keep them busy or something but it's immoral because now they still bringing immorality into cartoons so be careful what your children watch because that is where they kind of pick all these things from so and now all those um some of those cartoons have immoral contents that are promoting that's promoting the topic now we're talking about fornication okay yeah, thank you sorry, okay so i would like to say something about what she said okay okay now if you look at it this way um the sources talked about like she says something earlier she said one of the reasons she mentioned why people go into fornication it's like she she started with probably is the fault of the parents, but which I do not like. I don't know. I don't really fully really support. Guess. I don't fully support. Okay. Yeah, parents do that ignorantly. Like okay, for example, now in this part of the world where poverty has eaten deep into like people in this uh, rural area. Now okay. just imagine um, in the case where um, um, family of probably six or seven are uh, living in just a single room apartment. Probably in the night where um, father and the mo- uh, mother are doing all those sort of their stores and mm-hmm. the children are like is it really, what I'm trying to say now is it really, is a story real story which I've probably have had yes. time back where the young guy the, the boy and the girl we at night they wake up to to watch what their parents are doing and when the parents are not around the the boy will call the sister, the sister will call the boy and say oh yeah let's practice what mommy and daddy mm. are doing when like what they used to do at okay, night and that's it it's in the, the point was i think at, at last the boy committed suicide because he could not yes he could not cope how will i be having carnal kind of um, knowledge of my sister and at, at, at the end he went to uh, to Commiss- commit suicide it was his sister that later came out to confess that this is what happened yeah so parents like i said earlier I don't really support that people probably parents at the cause. Yes, some do that ignorantly. Some are the cause ignorantly. But what about some that probably they've taught if um, some parents that have taught their children right from like when they were small. Yeah. They, yeah. They, yeah, exactly. They fed them with the word of God and they've cautioned them, they've even given them but sex still education. Going to... But yet they go out to like like to come from the show. Okay, what is the cause? What like I said I don't really I don't fully believe that the parents are the cause. So in that in this kind of condition, um, what is who has to be blamed in this okay. uh, particular scenario? Well I just I, say, okay just to add to what you said, I know we're talking about fornication and it's it's important that we also put a foundation to it. So fornication is unlawful sexual relations between a man and a woman that is not married. But also, um, we have to understand that the, there's, there's lawful sexual relations that God yes. approves of, which is between someone who is legally married, between a man and a woman. That's foundation, because basically that's where procreation um, comes cool. from, of yeah. course. So um, it's good that that is you know, settled and that's like the foundation. 
But most importantly, just as you mentioned about parents, so the role of a parent, every child also has a role. So the parent's role is to train the child, to nurture the child in the way of the Lord, so that when he grows up, he will not depart from what has been taught. So in cases where the, there is no nurturing and there is no teaching in terms of nurturing that child in the way of the Lord, there's a possibility that that child may not even have anything to hold on to, not to talk of departing from what has been taught. So the role of the parent is to nurture the child, and the role of the child is, is to make sure that what has been imputed and um, imputed into that child does not leave him. You know, the person is able to take the instruction. The Bible says that if you listen to the instructions of your father, you are a wise child. So when you receive those instructions, it's for you to go out there, even wherever you are, those instructions, those godly traits and in-depth truth of the word of God is still inbuilt in you that even when you go out and when, even when you know that this is what happens within your household, you're still able to stand out and you're still able to say no, this is not for a child of God. This is not for a Christian. So I think I wish just I just stop to mention that. So as we start, I'll continue on this question. Okay. Mm -hmm. To answer his um, question, when he said, um, sorry, my, "Yes, who is okay. to blame?" I feel that those children that um, their parents have already told. They brought them up in the way of the Lord. They know that fornication is wrong, but they're still going to it. Um, some of these people, they, they are curious. They want to know, just like, they want to know more about these things. They are, they are just, those people that are inquisitive, they want to know, and that's how they enter into stuff like this. Then I also want to ask, um, you know, we have a lot of, People in relationships, um, people, uh, literally everybody is going into relationships now. It has become a normal thing. I'm not saying relationship is bad, but why should anyone enter a relationship in the first place? Like, why should anyone even um, think of entering a relationship in the first place? Okay. Okay. Um, concerning that, why should anyone go into a relationship in the first place? You know. Surprisingly, I had a discussion with somebody last night about this. So, and the same question, I also brought up the same question. I feel um, the main purpose for going into a relationship is, should be for marriage. Mm -hmm. If you are not ready to settle down, if the man is not ready to settle down with the woman, or if the woman is not ready to settle down with the man, then I don't, I don't think there's any need for a relationship. You know, one thing that has affected our generation these days is that we pick up something. We pick up things easily. Mm -hmm. You know, we, they were in the days of our fathers and our mothers, these things were taken to be something serious that only the mature mm -hmm. should be involved in. Yes. But now in our generation, everybody just wants to get involved. It's the thing that is invoked. Meanwhile, it's only the mature that should be involved in it. Mature in what sense? It's not only age is just a number, like they say. Yeah, it's not true. only I'm 24 years of age and I sh I'm, I'm legally allowed to be in a relationship. But, okay, financially, I used to as a man. Secondly, you know, there are other things you should pursue for yourself as a woman. Thank God we're having women these days that aspire to be leaders. They attain, after their BSc, they go further to attain their master's and their PhD. That kind of thing, you consider many things before you just settle down and say, okay, I want to be in a relationship with this guy. Because once you are not even prepared, once you are not mature, you find yourself falling in the same pit of fornication. Yes. Because you're not ready for marriage and you're just having a relationship for two years. Some people even get bored and if you want to spice up the relationship is to commit fornication. That's to have premarital sex. That's what will keep the love alive. Mm. So, so when the purpose of that relationship is not fulfilled, fulfilled. then yeah, yeah. yeah. I can lead to fornication. So to our young adults out there, please let's be sensitive to some matter like this and also just wake up. I think it's time that our eyes are opened. It's time for our eyes to be open to some of these things. So, yeah, so in summary, fornication is wrong. As long as you are not, um, you are not married, anyone that is not married is not supposed to involved in be involved in premarital, sex. in premarital sex. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we are going to look at the dangers of fornication, the consequences of fornication, what fornication can lead to. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, saw you that I interrupted you, what you wanted to say. This is where people, are, especially young adults, are not getting it right. Most of them just go into fornication for just enjoyment and, uh, and, f and for pleasure mm -hmm. and fun. But, not to think of it, look at, let's go back to the Bible. The Bible character, we, we saw the life of Joseph. I just want us to ask ourselves this question. What if Joseph had slept, had slept with Potiphar's wife? What yeah. would be the story of Joseph? Mm. The story would have ended there. Yeah, exactly. What would have been the, the story of Joseph? Is it what we are hearing today that we hear about Joseph? Mm. Because the, it's the will, nation, his relationship yes. with God. Even been. the nation that, like the generations that were depending on him. Mm. They have, I don't know. I don't know if you are, you are exactly. understanding what I'm yes. trying to say. What of if he had done that? What would be the story? Not even for his own self. Let's forget the fact that yet for his, for the whole nation, generation unborn, mm. and that's one thing that happens when we when we leave the presence of the God, the presence of God, because a lot of generations are waiting out there. Each individual, I keep telling people outside there, even when I when I speak to people and probably share some things with them, I do tell them. I say each of us we have a tax in hand. Your tax is different from mine. Yours is different from us. And if we, the only way to fulfill that tax is to what? Follow the line, yes. yes, follow the line of God. And uh, if we, if we, like, if we, err from that, yes, way. if we err from that, from that, from that line, a lot of people will suffer. Yes. And each of, and that person will be what? Accounted, we, we, God will like, hold the person responsible. So in every danger, let's, let's look at the life of, like, the life of Jesus, just like I said, what would have happened? What would be the story if he, 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 like he, he went to bed with what first wife? Yeah. So I think that's that's also yeah, that that's that that And says. also to add to what he said, um, I saw a post recently. He said, if you have faith like Abraham, if you love God like David, okay. But if you are not disciplined like Joseph, then I'm sorry, mm. everything is not right. It's yeah, not exactly. okay because you need the discipline of Joseph. You can have the faith of Abraham. Have the love of David, but that discipline that of discipline. Joseph. Because I remember listening to someone, a man of God, and he was sharing his experience. And he said he had an encounter, and just paraphrasing, he said in the encounter he saw some people begging, some people crying, mm -hmm. and they were wailing and just bitter. There was this kind of sorrow all over. And I was like, what's happening to these people? Who did this to them? A lot of them pointed to him. Mm -hmm. What did that mean? It meant that, like what he said, there's a generation, there are a set of people that God has assigned to you. You should see something as, he says in Romans, it's creation eagerly waits for the manifestation of what's the sons of God. So there are people that are actually tied to you. If you don't manifest, they are just dead. Mm -hmm. So, also, just to add to what he said. And also, the Bible said in First Corinthians 6, verse 13b, he said, it's like he was so... Um, Pascal about it said, now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Saying that though God has given us the opportunity to be in our own body, we are not the owners of our body. Some people might say that um, I'm not a Christian, I don't serve a God, so this is not um, applicable, applicable to, to me. It is applicable to you because you didn't create yourself. God created you whether you want to believe it or not. So your body is for God. And we have to respect that fact. And also the Bible said in First Corinthians 6 verse, it's in flee fornication. He's not telling us to run. He said, flee, flee. Is run, run faster than run. Flee from it. Yeah. <laughs> so we should be very, very um, cautious about that. And verse 20 said, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. Our body is meant to be used to glorify God in everything we do, the way we dress, the way we act, the way we use our body should be used to glorify God. And if it's not glorifying God, then sorry, my brother, you're not doing the will of God. And my sister, please, glorify God. Thank you very much. Um, now we're going to call on our special guests. Um, we, want to, we want you to tell us what is your advice to people out there that might have been involved in things like this? Some might not know how to come out. They feel that 
um, they are already in it, so there is no way they should, they should just continue. What is your advice to them and to uh, to those that even in it and feel that there is nothing wrong with it? What is your advice to them? Okay, so first of all, before I answer your question, um, I believe that there are so many other things, dangers, consequences of going into fornication. The very first is separation from God, because obviously it's a sin before God, and you committing um, sin against your own body, as you mentioned, you're being separated from God. And God hates fornication, just like any other sin. Another thing is that you will be, in terms of your body, you can actually catch some sicknesses and diseases that are sexually um, transmitted, like STDs, even AIDS, HIV age, you can actually catch all those diseases and obviously it's not a situation that you want to put yourself or put, your, put yourself in. So it's very important that you desist and you stay away just like you, um, our young people mentioned, flee fornication. And interestingly, most of these people that actually go into it, sometimes it's not something they want to do. They are being influenced by their friends, social media has been you know, it has, I, for me, I feel it's, it has brought more pain than gain, depending on how you see it. Um, because a lot of people are influenced by what they see. And even that's what the Bible says, that the source basically is the heart. So out of the heart cometh the issues of life. The Bible says in um, Matthew 15 verse 19, it says, For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness and slander. So it's very important that, you know, true as we live our lives as young people, and um, we also um, not, we are not influenced by what we see. We guide our hearts because that is our treasure. That is where, you know, that's where everything about, about us sits in. So for anything to happen, it originates from the heart. Mm -hmm. I know of a situation where somebody was teaching another student and the lesson teacher will come, I heard about the story, and all of a sudden the person will come and start, you know, telling her, oh, do this, do that. And she was uncomfortable, but with time, as time went on, do not tell your mother, I don't want to hear you say anything, yes. if not, I'm going to beat you, I'm going to, you know, hurt you, threatening. and threatening the person. And the person, that's how everything started, the person gave in and just kept on committing all of that and it also leads to abortions as well because if you get pregnant you can stop your school the dreams that you have what will happen to them you, you, it will all be short-lived and that is not what you want so it's very important that you make the right choice it starts with the choice that you're making every day of your life i tell say to young people one of the important things that you face one of the tests that you go through in life is a test of purity and if you can pass that test just like you said about joseph you will be able to get your life and get to your destiny. So when you're faced with a situation, the most important thing, when I was serving in NYIC, God ministered something to me that has really helped me through time. You know, when you're faced with a sin of immorality, it could be anybody, it could even be somebody that you look up to, wants you to succumb. You have to learn to say no. And he says, God is watching you and the devil is watching you. And when you come to that point and God is saying, this is my child, I will not, she would, she would not succumb. And the devil is saying, no, just watch her and see, watch him, you know, she's going to succumb. So there's a battle. So if you understand that, you will know that when you're going into, when you actually fall, you're disgracing God because the devil is going to be like, oh, you see, she actually fell. You know, so when you when you come to that situation, know that it's a test that you need to pass, and God <coughs> applauds and celebrates you for being able to pass that test. I just want to encourage people out there who are already in that situation. There's a way out because God loves you, but He hates your sin. And you might be you might be watching us now. And you're saying I've gone too far to even you know. Does there hope for me? You know, is there can God actually heal my wounds? Is there a way out of this? I'm addicted to it. I know people might be addicted to it, like it's their breakfast. You know, they can't do anything except they meet with somebody. But God wants you to know that there is a way out. The Bible says that if you will humble yourself and come to Him, confess your sins, that He will in no wise cast 
you out. He will no wise cast you away. So it's very important that first of all, you know that this is a situation that you need help. And you're saying, I'm willing to come to Jesus. I'm willing to come to someone who can help me. And that person is Jesus, not any other person. He's the answer. He's the solution that you need. Come into your mercy seat because the mercy of God is still available. And return to Jesus before it's too late. As you come to him, be rest assured that it doesn't matter how dark your sin is. It doesn't matter how um, hot you've been. There's a solution in Jesus. So I want to encourage you to return to Jesus. And if you're a Christian who has backslidden, who has fallen, there is also a solution for you in Christ. So come back to him just like the prodigal son. And I'm sure that God will not reject you. As you come to him, he will make you a new person. He will change your story. And some people are also saying, so oh, I've lost my virginity. You know, and am I going to regain it? You might not regain it physically, but spiritually, you're going to regain your virginity in Christ. I want to encourage you to come to Jesus and He will meet you at the point of your needs and set you free from the spirit of fornication. Amen. 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 You have a question? Okay. Um, sorry, ma. Uh, I believe that. I'm asking this question on behalf of yeah. the, uh, some of the viewers. Mm -hmm. No, yes, ma'am. You have different age brackets. And I feel probably even those that are both, or even the, those that are supposed to have gotten married, but they haven't due to one challenge or due to one issue or the other. And you feel like, oh, since marriage is not mine, it's not their thing. <laughs> Let me put it that it's not their thing, but it's my yeah, own thing. So, so this, yeah. <laughs> this marriage is not their own thing. That probably if they can just probably have someone outside to probably give birth and so that that's the unbelief that probably the child that gets after uh, out of marriage will just continue their lineage mm -hmm. and that is all. So now I feel it's still part of fornication we are talking about. I mean, am I am yes. I right? Yes. So ma'am, what advice do you have for this set of people? Because I believe we are not just only talking to teenagers. Uh, talking. So there are some that are also in this situation. So Ma, what do you think would be the right uh, like advice to give this set of people? Okay, okay so um, generally, people, they might have different um, desires and needs in terms of how to solve whatever situation they are currently in. Um, but the truth is that the standard of the Bible remains the standard that we should follow. Um, so, even the Bible says, let's just um, go through First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. It says, "Know ye not that your righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminates, effeminates nor abusers of themselves with mankind." Um, it goes on to say, um, no thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So, um, in whatever form, in whatever way fornication comes in, or it's wrong, based on the Bible, it's wrong. So, it's very important that um, as much as you're pressured by society, as much as you're pressured by your friends or by your like, family members, it's important to still stand for what is right which is free fornication, as everybody has said. So that's my advice. So if, you're, if, you, if you can't um, keep yourself, then get married. Yeah. Get married. Said, don't so, born in don't passion. Born. Don't born in that loss of passion. Yeah. It's better so to just, just solve just the problem. Just get married. Like yeah. And hopefully God will settle the person in mm -hmm. terms of marital. Amen. And you should not forget that there is something called hair fire. If you fornicate, you go to hair fire. <laughs> it's also something called heaven. Exactly. For God to love the world, that whosoever believe it gives only son, that whosoever believe it shall not, not perish. perish. So we have yeah. perishing here, but we have everlasting life here. So keep your focus. Even if you're not married here, then there's a better place. Yes. Married yeah. to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Is there anyone that wants to say anything? Do you have any That's final cool. thing to say? So Success. I'll just say, um, keep yourself as a lady, keep yourself. And also, as he said previously, that um, as she said, that out of um, the heart, comments, um, the issues of life. Yeah, the issues of life. 
So we should and also in verse 20 in First Corinthians chapter 6, it said, For ye are both by therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. It doesn't say glorify God in your body, it also said glorify God in your spirit. So we should what we should be careful of what we think about, what we what comes out of our hearts, what comes out of our minds, of our spirit, of our inside. So that will help us to be able to keep our body once we are conscious of that aspect. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Um, John, do you okay. have anything um, to say? Yeah, I just want to just admonish everyone out here. Okay, I just want to be sorry, I won't take your time. Just from uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, they say, uh, from verse 1, sorry, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. service. And be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The truth is that we are Christians, and we are expected to stand out in everything we do. Yes, in everything we do. We are not to, we are not to be what, conformed to this world, but either we should transform the world. So in anything we are doing, we should not follow the ways of the world. We should try to even transform them, even uh, not that we are conforming to their own world. So that's what I have to say. Um, thank you very much. Samuel, do you have anything to say? Okay, just drop this few things you can hold on to. Stay conscious of your eternity. That's like what we said, heaven or hell. Number two, um, please, um, self worth is not until when you lay yourself down to like commit fornication. God said you are beautifully and what? Wonderful. Wonderfully yes. made. So number three, um, remember, like we said earlier, people are depending on you. Souls are waiting for you. Destinies are waiting for you. So it's time to arise and shine for your light is come. So that's what I have to say. Um, thank you very much. That's it for today. If you have questions, if you have um, comments, drop it in the comment box. And we hope that you have been, you have learned something today and you have been impacted yes. by this talk. And we hope that those outside that have been looking for solution will also get it from here. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Yeah. And hit the notification bell down <laughs> yeah. below. God and bless. please drop your comments. Yes. Yeah, I want to hear from you guys. Yes. Okay, bye. Bye. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you.